Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. More Newcastle now transfer news and in general, quite a lot of Newcastle now news to get through today. So welcome back to the channel. Apologies yesterday for not rolling the video. I actually went to the Gateshead game. Then I watched the vlog back and I thought, you know what? I want to just sort of a double non-league vlog and kind of won. It sounds a bit weird, but I just thought I want to make the video a bit better really. So yeah, I'm going to do a double non-league vlog. I don't know when I'm going to go to the next game, but at some point I'll get an odd game done. We'll get that sort of a double upload. But anyway though, um, back on topic now, welcome back. If you're new around here, make sure you get down there, hit that subscribe button. Lots of exciting content coming up this week. We've got Manchester City on Sunday. Let's just hope we can get a decent score against them. As well as that though, you can get down there, smash the like button. And finally, question of the day. I didn't say at maximum, do you guys want to meet him? Because on Saturday, he goes back to the Metal Centre. Now, if you remember on the channel a few months ago, we actually had a meet and greet vlog on where you just saw the first time meeting all the different Newcastle fans there. So, listen, if you guys want to try and meet him, then just go to the Metal Centre. I've got no idea how much it costs. I know last time you had to buy a headband to go and meet him. So, I don't know what it is this time because it's with Helios, his actual game brand, rather than his clothing brand. So, bear that in mind and... Obviously, he'll be training in the morning with Newcastle on the Saturday, so he'll be there in the afternoon. Don't know what time. It'll be a pop-up store, so no idea where about it is. I think last time it was opposite the Newcastle United store in the Metro Centre, so we'll see if it's there again. But anyway, guys, I will be there personally, so if you want to get in the vlog, you want to say hello, feel free to do so. Fingers crossed, you know, we get to meet Sir Maxman again. We'll just wait and see. We'll see what happens. But anyway, though, uh, that's about it. Without further ado, let's get into all the news now. So we begin off by talking about that picture again at Stamford Bridge on Sunday where Amanda Stavey and Murder both went over to see the Chelsea owners enjoying their wine and interacting with each other. Now, outside of that, the PIF themselves and Chelsea's owners are actually teamed together to make their own business, essentially. So they're going to spend £750 million worth of money just on making new hotels and luxury places for guests to go to. So... The reason why I talk about that now is just in case those two pictures correlate together. So I still stand by that Newcastle went there for transfer related activity because of the amount of Chelsea players Newcastle want to try and get them on loan. So nothing's changed regarding those players. We'll explain about them in a bit. But it's important though that Newcastle owners and the Chelsea owners are actually working together outside of football on a new project. So the relationship again between the two clubs is going to be very good going forward. So yeah, there's a little heads up there. There's actually £750 million of their own money just going on hotels. Now, I don't tend to talk about individual journalists on my channel, but in this case, I will because this is someone I've seen quite a lot on Twitter now continue to bash on Newcastle, intentionally trying to antagonise fans. And yeah, I, I just want to sort of have my say now. So this one, he came up with an article about a lady in Saudi Arabia that's been arrested for 34 years because she's logged on to Twitter. Now, first off, I think articles like that are quite important. I think it's important for people to understand what happens in individual countries, and in this case, Saudi Arabia. Now, I'm not oblivious, I'm not deluded. I know Saudi Arabia has a part in Newcastle. Obviously, the payoff owns 70% of the club. The prince of Saudi Arabia is part of the payoff. So, yes, I understand that. I understand these things have to be mentioned, but it's highly hypocritical when you single out Newcastle time and time and time again. Bearing in mind with Tariq here, he does it over and over and over again just to try and tick Newcastle fans off. Bearing in mind as well that Anthea Joshua actually fights in Jeddah on Saturday. You know, a huge pay-per-view fight in Saudi Arabia. He hasn't mentioned that. Disney Plus is owned by Saudi Arabia. He hasn't mentioned anything about Disney Plus. He just he can use hundreds upon thousands of different examples because Saudi Arabia owns so much in today's world. But it's Newcastle, Newcastle, Newcastle every single time. It's dirty journalism. He's continuing just to try and wind Newcastle fans up because he knows you'll get a reaction. It's going to just improve the exposure of his articles. It's, I've had enough of him. This guy is very irritating. I just, well, I forgot to say, it's just media bias. It's agenda driven. And listen, there's no place for it. There's just no place for it at all. So, yeah, I just thought I'd call him out there. Listen to it. You've been named and you've been shamed. Stop it. One final thing before we get into the transfer news now. So, Newcastle United's worldwide fan base. So, according to research over in America, Newcastle United actually have the sixth biggest fan base across there. I mean, wow, that's incredible considering how the club has been the last 14 years. And you've seen first time St. James's Park as well. I had a lot of different people come up to me. You do get a lot of people from America or Canada that actually go to games. And it's great to see. Uh, of course, when I went over to Austria to see Newcastle play. You have so many different fans across Europe that just travel through several countries to watch Newcastle. Of course, we've got Saudi Arabia now, we've got Australia, New Zealand. This worldwide fan base, it's great to see. And Newcastle, we should take 
I mean, we should just take advantage of this. We've got so many different fans. I want to support the team. Let's give them a reason to support the team, which is what the new owners will do now. So, yeah, that's great to see. I do believe that 100% of the amount of fans of America is crazy. You see them on Twitter. You see them in real life. It's great to see. So, yeah, keep it up. This worldwide fan base, it's just expanding more and more. So, on to the transfer news now. So, let's just get the Chelsea players out of the way first because not, nothing's really happened since my last video. The only thing that's changed really is that now Manchester United won Pulisic and it's reported that the player wants to go to Manchester United. I mean, this is something that I see quite a lot with players. Like a lot of players actually really want to go to Manchester United. I, mean, I don't watch them what I'm watching on the telly because I watch them both games now and they're rubbish. Like I don't get the incentive anymore to go to Manchester United. Yes, they've won so many titles in the past, but I mean, it's just a, it's just a sinking ship at the minute. Why would you want to go there? So... Uh, yeah, at the moment, it looks like Pulisic wants to go to Manchester United, which I think will be a huge miss for Newcastle. I think he's someone that would be brilliant to bring in. As we just said before, the American fan base, I mean, that just gets more fans in the commercial sense. But on the pitch, it's the most important part, and Pulisic would start for us. He's better than what we have, in my opinion, and he's somebody there that just needs game time. He needs to get to the World Cup and Christmas. I just he, He's one I really want to see, so if we don't get Pulisic, I'll be a bit gutted about that one. But as for the other Chelsea players, of course, we had Hudson and Doyle. We've got Borja helping us in the past. I don't think that was going to happen, to be honest. We've got Bo uh, so I had Hudson and Doyle, and we had Gallagher. Those two, are, again, I would take those two. We just had to see what happens to the Chelsea players. But nothing's really changed. That's the main part I'm talking about in this video. Nothing's changed since the last one. Something that has drastically changed, though, is the striker situation now. The Castle's main target was trying to get in Gonzalo Ramos from Benfica. Now, there's been a massive spanner in the works now because Wolves want to sign the player now. And he has a lot of good connections with the Wolves manager and Wolves Portuguese system at the club. It's going to be sort of a yes on the kick, really. It's put Wolves in the driving seat now to sign Ramos. And as a result, the Castle just seem to be stumped once again. It's, it's becoming a bit of a common occurrence now. I, I don't know what's going on. I think the Castle just want to just not spend the money all in one place. I want to try and spend the money without being ripped off. But unfortunately, when there's only a couple of weeks left, we're getting to that stage now where we kind of got to either spend the money or just, I don't know, just try and get someone in because it, it's getting a bit slow now. Uh, I think fans are getting quite frustrated now. And it's the market, we're just going to get ripped off from most players anyway. So if it's just a couple of million extra, we, we should, you know, I think we should do it for some of the players. Uh, it just depends on who it is and what situation it is. But yeah, once again, it looks like another player has slipped from Newcastle. So it, it, the list is becoming a lot longer now. And somebody that Newcastle has been confirmed to have bidded for is Jao Pedro from Watford. So the man that is 21 years old, he scored three goals in the Premier League last season. This is probably the most polarising player I've seen so far. I've seen 50% of people want him, 50% of people say he's actually garbage, don't get him for £20 million now. First off, you've got to remember with his striker is we're not getting this player in to be better than Callum Wilson. This player is supposed to come in and just improve the squad and be there for backup. He's supposed to be there from when Wilson gets injured or maybe potentially cast somebody dropping down the midfield or something. I don't know. I don't know Pedro that well, to be honest. I don't watch Watford week in, week out. But I think to say he's only scored three goals last season, it's a bit harsh because you've got to think of a guy like Sim Maxman at the club, for example. He didn't score many goals last season, but his presence on the pitch is just unmatched. He's an absolute game changer. So I think it's a bit harsh to judge him based on goals and assists alone. But yeah, he's 21 years old. That, of course, he may have a good future, he might not. It's a bit of a gamble, I would say, for £20 million. We saw with Chris Wood last season, it didn't turn out for him. But, I mean, this kid is so young. He's the same age as me. He's got a bright future ahead of him. We just don't know if he's going to hit the mark straight with any castle. We kind of need somebody, I feel like, that. Well, once he has to come on, I think he does need to hit the mark as soon as possible. I just, I don't know if Jao Pedro is going to do it, to be honest. So, yeah, so the castle had a second bid for £20 million now. It hasn't been rejected yet. This is an active bid. So, yeah, uh, we'll see what happens to this one. I'll be honest, I'm, I'm not that fussed about him. I'm not sort of jumping to try and get him in, but at the same time, I'm not those people on social media that they say they don't want him at all. So you let me know your thoughts on him, guys. It's a very mixed response on there, Joel Pedro. I'm, it'll be interesting to see whether the owners will actually look at the response and go, you know what, we're not going to bother Joel Pedro, we're going to go elsewhere because sometimes the owners' reaction can actually be based off what the fans think. So we'll see what happens with this one.
That's it for me, guys. I've seen a lot of people over the last few days just believe that Newcastle's not going to sign anyone else for the rest of the transfer window. Now, I still fully stand by Newcastle will sign at least one more player for the end of the window. You've seen it every single day now. The club is still actively trying to bring players in. Yes, it's not went well. Yes, we're not getting the players we're trying to get in. But the club's not going to stop. We need more signs. There's no doubt about it. We haven't signed anyone in the attack and that's going to be a huge problem if Wilson or St. Maxim gets injured because we haven't got the squad depth there. Murphy, Richie, Fraser, Almiron, Wood. We haven't, we just haven't really got the quality on the bench that will help us in those matches or game-changing players that can come off the bench. We just don't have that at the club in the attack, I feel like. So, yeah, Sighton still have to be made, of course, a show of his long-term injury as well. We've got a few problems to deal with. I think Newcastle will address it. I still believe we will make the signs, regardless of how bleak it may seem in the media. So, that's just my personal opinion, guys. You have your own opinion, that's fine, but... I still say don't worry, I still think the club has this under control, I don't think it's a concern. But yeah, that's it from me, though. let me know your thoughts in the comment section and I will see you all in the next one.